rearranging the office case introduction. Imagine that you were asked to prepare an analysis to determine how the arranging of the main office of the drug store chain company will help reduce costs. Before we move on to data in Excel, let's go through a few additional general information. So the company is uh, located in Poland and currently in the head office they have uh, 600 people. Since they have spotted that the current layout causes some waste, some inefficiencies, they want to rearrange the office space. Obviously, before they do that, they want to estimate uh, what would be the cost of that and what would be the potential savings they can enjoy. Now, we will consider three potential improvements. In the first one, we introduce coffee points. Currently, everybody just has to go to the main kitchen and to prepare a coffee or a tea. In the second option, we want to introduce microwave ovens. We think that this will help with the lunches. Uh, currently, it seems that they are the bottleneck in this process. And the final thing we will be considering its internal stairs between office floors. We are located on two floors and we have noticed that a lot of people spend a lot of time by using the elevator and moving from one floor to another. And it seems that if we do that, this will help reduce um, the time spent on moving from the departments that are cooperating tightly with each other on a daily basis. Now, for every of the scenario, we're going to do cost-benefit analysis and we will try to estimate the cash flow generated from potential improvement. Let's have a look how you can structure this sort of analysis. We will use the example of a coffee point. So when it comes to the benefit, we'll look at the reduction in uh, time spent on preparing the coffee in hours. And we'll look at how much we actually pay for one hour to estimate what is the benefit. Then uh, when it comes to costs, it will be mainly cost of cleaning and maintaining the additional coffee points. And obviously we will have a capex. So the capex will be related to spending additional money on creating those coffee points. So these will be the three main things we'll try to estimate and we're going to do that for each and every option. Bear in mind that when it comes to the benefit, it will not be cash benefit. So that's in short, let's move to Excel where we'll look at the data and you will have an opportunity to solve this case on your own. Let's have a look at the data that you will need to solve this case study. So please open a file attached to the lecture, which is called Rearranging the Office Drugstore Chain version 6 MT. And here, as always in the sheet master, we have a table of content. As you can notice for every potential improvement, we have created two sheets, so before and after. In the before, we estimate the current cost, and in the after, we estimate the cost related to a specific activity after we do the potential improvement. So for example, the coffee has two sheets. So before is where we estimate uh, the current cost, and after we estimate what would happen if we improve uh, the situation and we put more coffee points. We will use the logic that we have shown in the PowerPoint presentation. So we're going to estimate the difference in time when it comes to specific activity. And on the basis of that, we will uh, estimate what is the, the benefit. In some cases, we obviously have to add additional costs and capex. Let's have a look at an example of coffee points. So in the coffee points before, we will see that we estimate the number of hours we devote to this activity on getting the coffee. Finally, we can relate it to full labor cost as a percentage to see what percentage of the total costs are generated due to people drinking coffee. And the time we spend, we calculate using the following things. So first of all, we look at the number of people and then we assume a certain number of cups being drank by one person. So we assume this is five cups and currently we have measured that this is 10 minutes per one cup. After we know how many days we've got in the air in the work and we use number of minutes in the hour, we can translate that into hours. So this is what you have to do for each and every activity. In the sheet where we estimate the impact of the potential improvement, we've got exactly the same thing. However, we also have to estimate additional items. So in the case of the coffee, we obviously have to estimate how many coffee points we, we need. And we're going to do that by looking at how many employees we've got in each and every year and assuming that every 40 people need one coffee point. The number of coffee points will help us estimate the investment, which we will calculate uh, on the basis of number of new coffee points and cost of one coffee point, which will be 20,000. We obviously have to add cost of cleaning and there will be certain assumed maintenance of 5,000 per year per one coffee point. This item we obviously will estimate using also the number of coffee points. Once we've got the, the time spent on the coffee before the improvement and uh, after, we can estimate the reduction. And thanks to that, we will be able to estimate uh, the potential savings expressed in money. 
And finally, for every investment, you should also estimate the cash flow. So this will take into account reduction in costs, so the savings, investments, and cost of cleaning. And I would also recommend to estimate the net present value for this sort of investment. So for every investment separately, we're going to do this sort of analysis. So to, to sum it up, we estimate what is the capex involved and additional costs. We estimate the new time spent on a specific activity. We compare the new time with the old time and thanks to that we have a reduction in time. Once we've got the reduction in times expressed in hours, we can estimate the potential savings. And finally, we get everything together and we estimate uh, the cash flow for this specific activity. Obviously, every year is here a separate column. So we've got five years and five columns. And you will have to also use additional data that we've got in the sheet parameters. There we have put the general data, so how much it costs to have one FTE. So we have estimated this to be 32,000. Then we have estimated also what is the cost per one hour. It is assumed to be 21. We've got the revenues of the company and also number of people in the head office in the first year. It's 600 people. However, we assume also that there will be an increase of 10% every year. So that's in short what we've got here. Have a look at the structure of the file and try to solve it on your own. As always, I recommend to pause now the lecture, use the provided data and the explanation, estimate each and every potential improvement, and after that, compare them in the sheet comparison. For other potential improvements, we've got uh, obviously additional assumptions in the sheets. You can have a look at them as well. So that's in short, have a look at the data. And as always, I recommend now to pause the lecture and to try to solve this case on your own. Once you are done with the solution and you have everything uh, filled in in the Excel with the calculations, move on to the next lecture where I will show you our solution to this case study. So I hope you managed to solve the case on your own, but just in case, let's go through the solution together. Please open file attached to the lecture, which is called Rearranging the Office Drugstore Chain Version 6. And in this lecture, we will solely concentrate on the coffee machines and the impact on the costs. So we're going to start with the before state. As you can see, we have estimated the time spent on getting the coffee to be 126,000 hours in the first year, and it grows up to 184 hours as the number of people grows as well. So we will have an increase in the number of people in the office from 600 to 878, as we have assumed 10% growth starting from year two. We have used here the assumptions on the number of working days per year and also the minutes in the hour to convert the time in expressed in minutes into the thousand of hours. Now, once we've got the hours, we can estimate the cost of getting the coffee. And this is shown in the row 14. As you can see, this is pretty high. It's uh, 2.6 million in the first year and it grows uh, almost to 4 million. We've also shown this to be a percentage of overall costs. So 40% of the time and 40% of the cost is actually devoted to this activity. And this is due to the assumptions we've got here. So five cups of tea or coffee and obviously a huge amount of time spent on that due to the size of the office. So this is 10 minutes. Now, the question is what will happen once we introduce coffee points? So we do that analysis in coffee A sheet and we start by estimating how many coffee points we will have. So we have estimated that we will need one coffee point for every 40 people. Therefore, with 600 people, we will need 15 of those coffee points in the first year. And as you can see, this number will increase to 22 in year five. This will enable us to estimate the investment in the coffee point. So we look at the number of new coffee points that we have to build and how much it costs per one coffee point. So the first year when we build majority of the coffee points to cover the group of people we've got, it will be obviously expensive. So we're going to spend 300,000 euro on that. And after that, it's just 30, 40,000 per year. In total, we're going to spend more than 400,000. Now, as we said, there will be additional costs related to the coffee points. So we have to estimate how much it will cost to clean them and maintain them. And we've estimated this to be from 75,000 in the first year to 110 in the fifth year. This is a result of the 5,000 per one coffee point and obviously the increasing number of coffee points. From the coffee B sheet calculation, we know that we are spending in the first year 126,000 hours on the coffee. The question is what will happen once we have uh, put the coffee points in place. And this is what we estimate in row 21. 
So the number of people is the same. We didn't actually decide to reduce the number of cups per one person, but we have decreased the time from the 10 minutes per one coffee to eight minutes. So not a big change, still it will have a pretty big impact on the cost. And we can see it already in the first year, instead of spending 126,000 hours on the coffee, we spent a little bit above 100. Therefore, we've got a saving reduction in time on this activity. And this is simply the difference between what we used to have and what we will have after the improvement is in place. And this will be 25,000 hours in the first year, growing to 37,000 in the last year. On the basis of that, we uh, estimate reduction in the cost of labor. So we will be saving above uh, half a million euro in the first year and almost 800,000 euro in the fifth year. Finally, we can estimate the cash flow from this specific improvement. So we treat it as a, an investment and we want to check whether it brings us additional uh, NPV or not. So we've got the reduction in costs estimated in row 32, which is simply the time multiplied by cost per one hour. We have to obviously do the investment and we add cost of cleaning and uh, maintaining the coffee points. Still, even the first year, this investment brings a positive cash flow. And as you can see in the fifth year, it's 628,000. In terms of net present value, assuming interest rate of 5%, we are able to save in total, taking into account the capex and additional costs almost 2 million in terms of cash flow and the last thing is we have also estimated what will be the cost of drinking coffee related to full labor cost as a percentage so it's going down from 14 percent to 11 percent in the next lecture we will have a look at the other improvements now let's have a look at the microwave ovens what will be the impact of this investment onto the cost of labor so we start by estimating cost of cleaning and maintenance. We already have some three microwave ovens and they generate six thousands of additional maintenance and cleaning costs. As in the previous example with the coffee points, we obviously estimate the main cost position related to time lost due to the activity. And we have estimated this to be 130,000 hours in the first year, and this grows to 166,000 hours in the last year. And this is due to the fact that although we have assumed just one meal, but due to the lack of microwave ovens, it actually takes a lot of time per one person to have a lunch. So it's 45 minutes. On the basis of the time, we estimate the cost of repairing the meal. In the first year, it will be almost 2.4 million, and then it grows to 3.5 million, obviously due to the fact that we have more people. In relation to the full labor cost, as you can see, this is around 12%. So this is still big, not as big as the coffee dough. And in the same manner, we approach the situation after we increase the number of microwave ovens. So first, we start by estimating how many we have to have. And we have assumed that there will be one microwave oven for every 40 people. So in the first year, we should have 15 and we have just three currently. And then we increase to 22, the number of microwave ovens. On the basis of that, we can calculate how many new microwave ovens we have to buy each and every year. So 12 the first year and then two every other year. This will enable us to estimate the investment we have to make. So this is pretty small and we estimate it by looking at the number of new microwave ovens and the cost or capex per one microwave oven. Again, we have to estimate the cost of cleaning and maintenance. It will be obviously bigger as we grow the number of microwave ovens. And in total, it will be almost 200,000 for five years. As we said, the main difference will be coming from the time spent on preparing the meal. So we compare the current state with the future state after we have increased the number of microwave ovens. And once we increase the microwave ovens, we have assumed that the time per one meal will go down to 25 minutes from the 45 minutes that we have currently. This means that in the first year, the time devoted to preparing the meal will be drastically smaller. It will be just 63,000 hours. Thanks to that, we can estimate the reduction in time. So the first year, we will be spending 50,000 hours less on preparing meals and 74,000 in the fifth year. After that, we calculate the reduction in costs using the reduction in time. So how many hours we, we save and also the cost per one hour. So as you can see in the first year, the savings are already huge. It will be around 1 million and it grows to 1.5 million in the year five. As in the previous example, we calculate the cash flow and the cash flow will be the difference in the savings and costs, the investments we have to make and the cost of cleaning. Since the investments and increase in the cost of cleaning are not big, 
the cash flow is huge. So already in the first year, it's 1 million and 1.5 million in the fifth year. In total, the net present value of this small improvements is more than 5 million in five years. We also can, as in the previous example, estimate the cost of preparing meal as a percentage of full labor cost. And as you can see, it's seven. It used to be 12. So there is a big drop in that as well. So in the next lecture, we will have a look at the stairs and we will finally sum up all the estimations that we have done so far. Let's have a look at the final potential improvement, the internal stairs. So we start by estimating in the sheet stairs B current costs related to this activity. As always, we start by uh, looking at the time. So it's 26,000 hours in the first year, and then in last year, it's 39,000. And then on the base of that, we estimate the cost. It's almost 600,000 in the first year, and it grows to 817,000 euro per one year. And we have estimated this to be worth around 10% of the full labor costs. Bear in mind that here we don't consider all people, but just a small fraction of them. So we have assumed that not all people will be using the stairs, it's just the 30%. Therefore, as you can see in the first year, we've got 180 people and it, this number grows to 264. Now in the stairs A sheet, we do the estimation of costs once we put the internal stairs. So people don't have to use elevators to move from one floor to another. They just use the internal stairs, which have a bigger capacity and are faster. So we have assumed that they will spend two minutes to move from one place to another, whereas currently it's seven minutes. Now, in the case of the stairs, we will have to have a big capex of uh, 600,000. And on top of that, there will be some small cost of cleaning and maintaining stairs. As in the previous examples, we compare the time spent on doing the activity currently with what we would have if we did the improvement. And on the basis of that, in row 19, we have estimated that there will be a huge reduction in time spent on this activity. So it will go down from 26 to 8,000. Therefore, there will be 19,000 savings in time in the first year. And this grows to 28,000. In terms of money, it's worth 400,000 in the first year and almost 600,000 in the last fifth year of our estimation. As in the previous example, we obviously want to look at the cash flow and we do that in row 33. As you can see in the first year, the cash flow is negative due to the fact that we have to put a lot of money into the stairs, but then it's pretty positive. Positive. In total, expressing a net present value, we are able to generate 1.5 million of additional cash flow. And again, we show it as a percentage of the full labor cost. So there will be 3%, currently it's 10%. So this is a pretty big difference. And finally, we can compare all the options. And this is what we do in the sheet comparison. So we show the reduction in time for each and every option. So coffee, microwave oven, and then stairs. Then we can see the reduction in costs, additional investments, additional investments, then additional costs, difference in costs of performing the activity. And finally, the change in the percentage points, as well as the net present value. So out of this, in terms of net present value, the biggest impact will be probably done by the microwave oven and then followed by coffee and stairs. So this gives you a pretty good ground on making the decision. So that's how you approach this sort of analysis. You can also present the results in a form of charts, and this is what we do in the sheet slide. So have a look at the analysis we have done. And as always, if you have any questions regarding our approach, or maybe you approach it a little bit differently, please let us know, and we are happy to provide you with additional information.